And now to the arts. A new order is an exhibition by four painters who feel a need for artists to reinvent themselves and try to be more original in their artistic expressions. Through 20 works of art, they encourage artists to walk the talk and stand out of the crowd in order for them to earn respect. Art Review Tonight takes a look at the new order. Sam Ovarity, Tony Okujeni, Oluwajai, and Peter Ohiwere, four strokes from the Auchi School, joined forces for an exhibition titled The New Order. The title itself suggests that it's not business as usual. The New Order is uh, using colors, uh, doing what you might call Better put, advanced painting. Over 30 works of art are laced with a lot of color, a style artists from that side of the divide are known for. But these hands intend to break the convention and stand out by just being themselves, letting the art speak their mind. And I have one that is very critical, which is called uh, Bring Back Our Men. Uh, bring Back Our Men, uh, for me, is to say that there are more males than men in Nigeria today. Uh, why am I saying that? Uh, when you have men in a country like this and they are men, uh, it is their responsibility to cater not just for themselves but for all. It's about stamping the difference between a painting and a picture, encouraging younger colorists to chin up, keep the flag flying, and reduce the era of reinventing all things done by the masters which doesn't show originality. When you want to motivate a child, you have to set examples, you have to set role models. Yes, you might have pockets of that here and there, but at a national level, something that is known by all. So I think that is partially responsible for uh, some of those youths not finding it attractive. They might have the talent. Everybody now wants to be a Nollywood star, you know, not minding it is because of the recognition. Each medium of expression and usage of materials are the key characteristics of contemporary or conceptual art. A new order is to reinstate purity and quality in the production of these works of art. Sports News, Nigeria's under-19 team at the ICC Africa Cricket Championship have lost their second game uh, by 165 runs to Namibia. In the match play today, Namibia won the toss, batted first and scored 252 for four wickets, while Nigeria produced 87 runs all out. With this result, it means Nigeria can no longer compete for a place at next year's under-19 World Cup qualifiers in Bangladesh. And despite the loss, coach Harry Tamano's team is still fourth on the table and can retain their Division I status by winning their next two games. Another tough challenge awaits Nigeria tomorrow when they meet Uganda. To more cherry news now, the Golden Eagles have made an impressive start to their 2015 Africa Under-17 Championship campaign with a 2-0 win over hosts nation Niger Republic today. Goals from Victor Simeng and captain Kilichi Nwakale's free kick ensure the two-time champions silence the home fans in Niamey. Nigeria will meet Guinea on Wednesday in their second Group A match before taking on Zambia in the last preliminary game. A win over Guinea will see them book a place in the semi-final and qualify for the FIFA Under-17 World Cup in October with a game to spare. And with today's fixtures of the FA Cup, Olivia Giroud scored two first-half goals to help Arsenal secure a place in the quarterfinals. Giroud's second goal was a delightful volley as the FA Cup holders showed class to beat Middlesbrough 2-0 at the Emirates. The Gunners move into the draw for the last eight as one of five Premier League teams with League One, Preston holding a host in Manchester United tomorrow evening.
In other FA Cup results today, Giants killers Bradford City followed up their fourth round win against Chelsea by beating Sunderland 2-0. The League One side have now qualified for the last eight and await their next opponents when the draw is done tomorrow night. New Aston Villa manager Tim Sherwood got off to a flying start at Villa Park after inspiring his team at halftime to a 2-1 win against Leicester City. This is the first since 2010 that Villa will make it to the last eight of the competition. Tennis now. Sanelas Vavrinka has won his first indoor title by beating defending champion Thomas Burdich 4-6, 6-3, 6-4 to win the ATP 500 World Tennis Tournament in Rotterdam today. Vavrinka lost the first set but bounced back to a sixth successive victory against Burdich. The Czech saved one match point at 5-3 in the deciding set of the Swiss sealed victory a game later with a swing in first that his opponents return long. This is Vavrinka's second title of the year after he triumphed in Chennai in January before falling at the semi-final stage of the Australian Open to eventual winner Novak Djokovic. Cricket and sports news tonight. India scored 300 and knocked out Pakistan for 224 to keep their record of never losing to their bitter rivals at the World Cup. Virat Kohli scored an imperious century as India opened their World Cup defence with a convincing 76-run victory over Pakistan at the Adelaide Oval today. The much anticipated Pool B grudge match, the latest chapter in one of the great rivalries in sports, attracted a passionate crowd of 41,587. Danish police in Copenhagen have shot dead a man who opened fire on them close to the site of two early attacks in the capital. They're investigating whether the man might be behind deadly shootings hours earlier at a cafe near a synagogue. In the first attack, one person was killed and two injured during a free speech debate at the cafe. Uh, police say he was most likely acting alone and had had connection with criminal gangs and had been convicted for violent offenses and dealings in weapons. Police also want to figure out whether the gunman was coping or copying the shootings in Paris last month that left 17 people dead. Ukrainian forces and pro-Russian rebels are observing a ceasefire brokered last week in the Belarusian capital Minsk. While both sides have urged the troops to hold fire, there have been reports of fighting just before the ceasefire started. Shelling has also reported to have continued in the town of Dobatsil, one of the places that has witnessed the heaviest of fightings in recent weeks. Germany has warned of consequences if this ceasefire is not observed by both parties. And Coast Guards in Italy are looking for over 1,000 migrants believed to be stranded on the Mediterranean Sea. A search teams are set to have rescued 130 of them and taken them to safety, but efforts are being hampered by armed men who approached them on a speedboat. The search comes less than a week when 300 migrants are drowned on the Mediterranean trying to cross over to Europe. 
the UNHCR says more than 3,500 people have died on the same route in 2014. And the main news again. It's a tragic day in Damaturu as a female suicide bomber blew herself up, killing eight others. Police say the bomber disguised herself as a passenger, boarded a bus at a motor park in Bayantasha and detonated the bomb. The Nigeria Air Force has taken delivery of new military hardware to prosecute battle with Boko Haram in the northeast. The Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Adishola Amosun, has promised that with the acquisition of the equipment, including attack helicopters, the insurgents will be weakened considerably in a matter of weeks. And there have been reactions to the postponement of Nigeria's elections in New York City in the U.S., as reported by our correspondent, Kingsley Amayo. And that's News at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Rachi Ubani. Stay tuned. Up next is a repeat broadcast of Politics Today.